Top the solo sailors they take on the transat. A lingi sweeps a chin down. Kiappa wins the 24 hours of one. And now in the newsroom, here is Miyacharan. NC Sports, plunge into the action. Welcome back for the latest NC Sports edition. I'm Mia Chiran, and once again, the world's oceans are packed with major water sports events now taking center stage. So let's get right to it and check out today's lineup. And they're off. After Monday's spectacular start, the pros are now on course to New York at the Transat. Alingi wins Act 2 in Qingdao for a full-on battle with Oman Air at the Extreme Sailing Series. Final results from Antigua Sailing Week. Spectacular comeback for Philippe Schapp at the 24 hours of Rouen. Sailing World Cup year, results and insight. Plus WSL Junior Pro Biscarros Euro 4 and lots more. It all started with a crazy bet over 50 years ago a wild air between a handful of pioneer sailors, including Francis Chichester and Blondie Hassler. Then it became a legendary race. From the UK to the US, the O-Star, defining offshore solo sailing as a sport. Rebaptized the Transat, it's racing now in the Atlantic Ocean. All the details in today's top story. Few regattas can boast a, such a prestigious uh, tradition, and with last Monday's cannon blast in Plymouth, the Transat is finally back racing in the Atlantic after nearly a decade-long hiatus. A moment of great relief after all that prep work, one of extreme focus on the challenge ahead, but also a moment of glory for 25 of the world's top solo sailors. Voilà, Voila, just a few minutes after the start. There's Pendwick. It's a good thing this start. It was easy. Tom took off just ahead of us, and there are our smaller friends. Wow, what a feeling. It's great. The multi holes at the start. Five different classes are now on the 3,500 nautical mile course set to New York and the three-way battle for the team and Maxi Trimorans with impressive average speeds of over 30 knots is grabbing plenty of attention. A beautiful start from Plymouth for the Transat. Nice and tight with my friend Erwan Leroux and Francois on the win. A great show from the outside and quite intense scene from the inside. François Gabart and Thomas Coville are already jostling for the lead and pulling away from Yves Le Bleveque as these 100-foot beasts stayed ahead of the weather systems, dipping way south of beyond the Iberian Peninsula before heading west across the Atlantic. The foil or not to foil offshore is still the big question among the Amoca 60 monohulls. Vincent Rieu's non-flying configuration on PRB did the pay off, leading from the onset and through the tough conditions in Phase 1, across the Channel and the Bay of Biscay. But Nucleash, Dick and Melia will get to play their aces. Well, Sébastien Joss was forced to early retirement due to mainsail damage on his Edmond de Rothschild. Time will tell who wins in the trade-off between speed and endurance. The Multi-50 fleet has also already lost one of its main contenders when Erwan Leroux announced his retirement Tuesday night after the bow of one of his floaters, Antoine was ripped away. It's an open call now with Antoine, Rucairol, Lamire and Nigon in a tight pack and already on the westward course. 
Low call in the open 40s uh, for early leaders uh, Sébastien Sorel, uh, who smashed the bowsprit on Van de Bay in a harrowing collision with a cargo ship in the English Channel, fortunately without injury, but forcing him out of the Transat to Baker League. Britain's Phil Sharp is making a statement among the top French pros, with Bochel Camus, Tripon and Duke chasing closely. Isabelle Joschke and Germany's Anna Maria Renken, the two women solo skippers in the fleet, are not far behind. And here we are. We're racing in the Transat. It's wet and wild. We just got the, the Jenica going. And now we're tramping along doing 14, 15 knots. And I'm having a lot of fun. It started, it started, and uh, let's go get him. Last uh, but certainly not least, offshore sailing legend Loïc Peyron is taking on his own iconic race along the straightest northern route and on board the historic Hendrik II. On the vocative uh, personal challenge on the very same boat that won back in the 1964 edition with another French solo sailing giant, Erwin Gabarly. After a week of sailing and partying, the winners of the 49th edition of Antigua Sailing Week were finally celebrated last Sunday. And once all corrected time calculations were complete, the verdict was soon released. Gypsy Hugo, captained by veteran Sir Hughes Bailey, reached the top of the overall leaderboard. Considered uh, the grandfather of sailing in Antigua and knighted uh, for his uh, services to yachting, Sir Hughes Bailey was uh, celebrated as the overall winner of the 49th Antigua Sailing Week. A costly mistake on the last race uh, could have well dashed all hopes uh, for the local Gypsy Hugo crew. But results uh, tallied uh, during the week in the CSA 7 class still held up, and the team got to raise the coveted Lord Nelson Trophy at the awards ceremony last Sunday on the island. Individual class winners also received a top honor recognitions before a cheering crowd and local authorities. France continues to be the world's epicenter for all major water sports, and it was no exception over the weekend, with power boating in Rouen, junior pro surfing in Biscarros, and sailing going on in both Hier and Cournac. No small wonder, then, if the French are always in the top spots. Let's catch up with all the latest in the NC Sports Briefs. For the fourth year in a row, Philippe Schiap has won the 24 Hours of Rouen, the grueling day and nighttime race through the heart of the northern French city. Schiap and his F1 China CTIC team got off to a rocky start with a technical problem that left them 15 laps behind after the first hour of racing. They fought their way back, however, and by the midway mark were once again leading the 32-boat pack. The rest was easy as they finished the race 41 laps ahead of runner-up Team Sigalak. Completing the podium stand-ins of the S1 category were Pegas Racing Team in third. In the S2 division, Team Abu Dhabi, in their first ever Rouen, beat out Habitués Team Navicart and New Star One, who came in second and third respectively. And in the S3 category, Ariane Racing Team finished first, followed by Copain Pilotsen in second, and Team Tua Tuar Patrimoine in third. Nailing uh, their 26th uh, consecutive title victory on the 49ers at the Sailing World Cup's classic stop over in Yer uh, last Sunday, Peter Burling and Blair Toop are stacking up the odds for gold in Rio 2016. Winning four of 12 races in southern France, the Kiwi duo has now ignited a metal forecasting frenzy. Sweden's Lisa Eriksson and Hanna Klinga were the big surprise with a narrow victory in the ladies' 49er FX. Winning three and rarely off the podium, Croatia's Fantela and Marinic dominated men's 470, while in the women's division, Mills and Clark took home the World Cup gold 
for the UK. Australia dominated the Finns with a 1-2 and with Lily taking first, but Twiddell securing the prize ticket to Brazil. Bulle, Nietzsche and Burton was the order of the men's laser podium in Yale, indicative of what Rio may bring in just a few weeks now. While Belgium's Evie Van Acker taking women's laser radial is a reconfirmed Olympic favorite. Top honors for Spain's Echavarri and Pacheco on the NACRA 17, while Poland again dominated the RSX with Miska and Tarnowski leading the men and Klepaczka the women's division. After a tough competition marked by harsh weather and a day of suspension, Frenchman Titouan Boyer and 17-year-old Ariana Ochoa from Bilbao have taken top honors at the WSL Junior Pro Biscarros. Boyer, who returned to competition last fall after being laid up for six months with a knee injury, shoots into first place in the overall men's European Junior Pro standings with this, his first ever pro circuit victory. Compatriots Marco Mignon, ranked third overall, and Titouan Dubo grabbed second and third place, respectively. Ochoa's win puts her in second place on the overall women's European junior leaderboard behind frontrunner Teresa Bonvalo, who came in second, and in front of number three ranked Nina Reynal, who captured third place. The tour continues next month with the junior pro Espino in Portugal. May 1st, the weekend was all about the sailing in Karnak, as the 30th edition of Eurocat went to center stage in this small town in Brittany, with perfect wind and a sea condition. Among top results, Australians Martin and Gate were unbeaten in the three races on the F-18, and also won the long-distance regatta. Belgium's Demis Maker and Bag secured the C-1 division. Manu and Morichaud dominated a C3, while top honors in C4 also went to a Belgian crew with Van de Waale and De Vos. Ernesto Bertarelli is truly back. As two-time America's Cup winner, Team Malingi flies to victory in a tricky Chindao race course at the Extreme Sailing Series. Then, top ongoing events, 360 P1 power boating action on Nautical Channel, and much more. We'll be right back on NC Sports after the break. Welcome back on NC Sports. Pro windsurfers are back in the game at the classic PWA season opener for freestylers in Podesdorf. From the Dragons to the DM24s, Douarnenez hosts the Grand Prix de Guyadet, and America's Cup greats square off in the Big Apple. It's all happening right now on NC Sports 360. Pro windsurfers are now back on the waters of Lake Neusiedlersee for the first stop of the PWA World Cup in Austria, a land-locked season opener just an hour's drive from south of Vienna that has gathered the top names in freestyle, including last year's winners Sara Kitelfringa working on a seventh title for her native Aruba, and Germany's wunderkind Philipp Koster. Elimination heats are now underway and final matchups are scheduled for this weekend. Meanwhile, in the French Bay of Douarnenez, a world-class fleet of dragons began proceedings this week at the Grand Prix de Guyadet, a true festival of sails. The event also hosts the DM24 regattas, kitesurfing, and a lively calendar of events dockside. The 
the Big Apple is now hosting the America's Cup Circus as Act 2 of the Louis Vuitton World Series holds a sixth races on the Hudson over the weekend. The buzz is already in the air in Manhattan, captivating fans and inspiring the city's greatest icons, like the New Yorker with a dedicated cover page. Big match expected between series leaders Emirates, Oracle and Land Rover Bar. The return of Team Alinghi to the Extreme Sailing Series for the season was a most welcome surprise for most fans. With two America's Cup and the 2014 world titles under his belt, everyone was wondering whether, where and when Ernesto Berferelli would make his comeback. Well, last Sunday the most famous Swiss sailing team of all time put the seal on Act 2 in Chindao and is now already neck and neck with the leaders of Manier. Claudia Casagrande has the story. On a tricky and often windless Chindao race course, Swiss team Alinghi have captured their first win of the 2016 Extreme Sailing Series, narrowly edging out rivals Oman Air in an intense Act 2 final. This victory for Ernesto Bertarelli's Swiss team, now led by expert helmsman Arno Sarofagas, puts them in second place overall with 21 points, just two behind Oman Air, led by skipper Morgan Larson, who remain in the number one spot thanks to the win in Act One. Yeah, we, we had a battle on point. We didn't seem uh, really often on the West Coast. We were quite apart from each other, but uh, we had a good race, they had a good one, and we had uh, even worst race together, so it's, uh, it was a good battle on point, but uh, we didn't fight on the water too much. Yeah. Skipper Roman Hagara and Red Bull sailing team racked up a third place finish, tying them with Alinghi on the overall standings. After a blazing start, Land Rover Bar Academy ultimately closed in fourth. Great start also for the new Sail Portugal in fifth, while the Danes of SAP Extreme never quite found their mojo and dropped to sixth place. Seventh place for Taylor Canfield's one team, the first Chinese-backed crew ever to compete in a full season on the Extreme Sailing Series. Still looking for results, Team Torx completed the Qindao leaderboard. Celebrating its first decade, the Extreme Sailing Series on the new high-flying GC32s will be back from June 23rd to 26th for Act 3 in Cardiff, UK. Whether it's surfing, sailing, rowing, powerboating or more, Nautical Channel is on a mission to bring you the very best events on the global scene. So for all of you speed fans out there, don't miss the 2016 season kickoff for the P1 Superstock in the USA. We've got you front row seats at the Grand Prix of the Sea in Florida's Lake Dora, considered the NASCAR of powerboating. So rev up the engines and relive all the action on Nautical Channel starting on Thursday, May 12th at 9.30. As many of you already know, one of our senior correspondents is now on the loose and taking on perhaps the biggest challenge in pro sailing, the Vendée Globe. But where is Sébastien Destroumont exactly? Well, he has just completed his personal qualification from Francis Toulon to Newport, USA. Here is the latest update on Face Ocean. Taking on the Vendée Globe Challenge is not for the lighthearted and requires experience, planning and preparation. That's exactly what's happening on Face Ocean following the refit and the revamping of the veteran Emoka 60 over the winter months. Skipper and the Nautical Channel colleague Sébastien Destremont left Toulon last month and has now reached Newport, Rhode Island, certifying his first solo navigation across the ocean. 
a very personal and successful transactor to test both man and machine before the start of the big round the world adventure in November. A world championship and America's Cup veteran, but also an expert and engaging sailing reporter, Sebastian will be sharing the experience with fans worldwide. You too can support the challenge by connecting to faceocean.fr. Russell Kutz's RC44 circuit is gearing up for round two in Spain's Soto Grande. There's more PWA action coming up for slalom pros in Korea. The flying moths meet up for the World Championship in Japan, and it's all against one Kiwi sensation Peter Burling. If you won't miss a beat, mark the dates on the NC Sports calendar. Soto Grande in Andalusia will provide the setting for the second leg of the RC44 World Championship coming up from May 11th to 14th. The second event of the 2016 Tour will pit British Team Agua, who have the iconic RC44 Golden Wheels back on board after winning the opening event of the season in Bermuda in March, against Proneno 6 sailing team and defending champs Team Nika, both from Russia, who hold the second and third spots respectively in the overall standing. The world's premier windsurfers head to South Korea from May 12th to 17th for the PWA World Cup Slalom in Ulsan. The opening slalom event of the 2016 season will see reigning world champion Antoine Albeau try to preserve his title against a heavyweight lineup that includes fellow Frenchman Pierre Maltefon, Italian Matteo Iacchino and Brit Ross Williams. In the women's camp, Aussie Serakita of Ringa will also seek to defend her hard-won crown, but competition will be stiff with Delphine Cousin of France and Turkey's Lena Erdil eager to take an early season lead. The 2016 Moth Class World Championships get underway in Hayama, Japan from May 24th to 29th. Many of the world's best sailors and reigning champions from around the globe will compete for top honors in four categories. Best overall, best over 45, best under 18, and women's. The regatta will be sailed as a single fleet series, or in case of a large number of entries, the fleet will be divided into groups and racing will consist of a qualifying series and a final series. There's lots going on as we've seen, so we'll catch up next week with more breaking news, results and exclusive insight from the world's top water sports circuits. Thank you for staying with us. I'm Mia Chanan and remember, plunge into the action with NC Sports.